The sun is shining, the grass is growing, and it's time for mowing. So if you neglected to drain the gas out of your lawnmower last fall, chances are it's probably now a congealed, rusted mess deep down inside the float bowl of your carburetor. So to clean the float bowl, here's some of the tools you're going to want. We got a little bit of uh, spray degreaser, that's actually brake clean, you probably want carb clean. We got some paper towels, a piece of sandpaper, or some of that 3M scotch bright pad stuff, or steel wool, any of those will work. A pair of pliers to remove your fuel line, and a couple of wrenches. The old style Walboro carbs and the Nikes seem to use a half inch on the bottom, and the newer style ones seem to be 7 16 A piece of old fuel line, and a blow gun from a compressed air tank is perfect. And you also probably want a container to drain some old gas in. First thing you want to do is take your pair of needle nose pliers and remove your gas line. And if this is old gas in here from last year, which mine is, you're probably going to want to drain it into a container and just get rid of it completely. Okay, so we got our fuel line off there and it's draining into this container. As you can see, it's uh, pretty disgusting looking. Alright, so once you get your fuel pretty much drained out of there, take your fuel line and just kind of hang it somewhere where it's not going to get in the way. And take your wrench and unbolt the main bolt at the bottom of this bowl. Oh yeah, more brown gas. Don't lose this. And that's got a little gasket right there you're going to want to keep. Make sure it's not broken too because that will cause leaking. Now the bowl is essentially unattached, it's just stuck because of this gasket here. But you want to be very careful in pulling this off because you don't want to break that gasket. Give it a couple little wiggles and hopefully you can see it's stuck there. You don't break it. Oh, good. We got it. You can see that gunk in the bottom of my carburetor. It's old rusty water. It's just nasty. You don't want that in your engine. So since I can't pull that carburetor off this machine, I'll give you a brief overview of what they basically do. This is from something completely different, so pay no attention to what it is. I'm just going to use it to kind of display how these things work. Your fuel line hooks here, fuel enters the carburetor right there. Right, that spot right there is where this little needle valve sits. Just like that. And when this float bowl fills up with gasoline, it causes that little needle valve to enter that hole and plug the hole that fills with gas. So it stops the gas from coming in the carburetor and it knows it's full because this thing floats. If this doesn't float, it's just going to constantly fill and, you know, flood your everything. If that hole is plugged, it'll make it so this thing won't seat completely, causing it to flood. If it's stuck closed, it won't get any gas at all. That right there is your main jet. That's where fuel gets picked up from the carburetor float bowl, off the bottom obviously. And air blows through this little port here, this is the carburetor port, and picks up off that venturi right there. And if that has even the slightest speck of dirt in it, this whole thing probably won't work. So those are the two spots you want to make sure really clean. That little needle valve seat and this little adjustable main jet. But you don't want to stick anything in either of these holes. You just want to use compressed air and some cleaning fluid. So the next step would be to remove this little float. Sometimes they're metal, sometimes they're plastic, but they're all usually held in with just a little pin. There's the pin. Keep that someplace safe and slowly lower the float. You'll see right there is my needle valve. So now this is a perfect time to spray a little bit of cleaner in your float bowl and use either the steel wool or sandpaper or whatever you've got to try to get all this crap out of here. You also want to take your little float and shake it around a little bit see if there's any fluid in it because if there is your float has a hole in it whether it's plastic or metal and if it does have a hole in it, it's probably never going to close because it's never going to float. So you want to throw that away and get a new one. Okay, so now you want to get your carburetor cleaner with a little straw and start blasting out this main jet and the fuel line. You don't need a ton, just get all the gunk out.
Oh yeah, it's getting right in there. Now's a good time to take that compressed air nozzle with that fuel line and blast it all clean. Ain't nothing left in there. Done and done. So if you got your float bowl clean, you're confident your float still floats and everything's all good with that, and you've got all your internal parts clean, then you can probably go ahead and start to reassemble everything. It's probably a good idea to take your gaskets and put a little bit of oil on them. Just so they don't break when you go to tighten everything back down. Just regular engine oil is fine. Make sure you get this aligned perfectly. Try to get the needle valve right into the hole there. And slide your pin back in. Test to make sure it doesn't stick closed. It looks like ours is doing pretty good here. We're going to go ahead and put the float bowl back on. Make sure your surface is at least kind of clean. Don't want any leaks. When you push it on, give it a little bit of a twist just to make sure everything's seated right. And retighten your little screw on the bottom. When you retighten this little screw on the bottom, don't go crazy with it. This pot metal aluminum is really easy to break. Really, you just give it a couple turns when it gets snug, just, you know, maybe a sixteenth of a turn. It's not there to bolt things together, it's just there to hold your float bowl on. Now you can go ahead and hook your fuel line back up. It's never a bad idea to replace these filters either. So once you get your fuel line hooked up, and fill your fuel tank with fuel, nice clean fresh gas, it's a good idea to check and make sure that none of these gasket surfaces are leaking or dripping. That one and that one down there. If you see any drips or anything dripping down off of it, then it's probably not sealed correctly. This one seems to be okay. The other thing is if it's not, if that float bowl doesn't function and close before, like I was saying, it could be flooding your combustion chamber right now. So it's always good to not put a ton of gas in your gas tank when you first start these off, just to make sure you don't have to drain a whole gas tank of gas if it doesn't work out. We're double boosting her. One set off the Murray, and the other one off of an old battery charger plugged into the wall. Hopefully we get this thing fired up. I haven't started it since uh, September, October of last year, so I don't know what's gonna happen when I turn the key.